Hi everyone and welcome to Faith and Yoga at St. Bartholomew's. I'm Dixie and I'm here with my husband Fred. I'm here with my granddaughter Morgan who's joining us today, Erin Porter and Glenn Gobrek. So we welcome you to this hour of Faith and Yoga. We'll start by having Glenn come up and do the gong and then we'll start with our breathing. for a count of four, holding for a count of four, and breathing out through our nose. So when you're ready, inhale, one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and exhale, four, three, two, one. Let's do that four more times, breathing in, through your nose, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four, and exhaling, four, three, two, one. Next inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, and exhale, four, three, two, one. And two more breaths. Breathing in. One, two, three, four. Holding. One, two, three, four. And exhale. Four, three, two, one. And one more time. Deep breath in. One, two, three, four. Holding. One, two, three, four. And exhale. Four, three, two, one. Well done, well done. Well, we're still in the month of June, and we're working on a, our June bug theme that I have going on here. And this week, we're focusing on the dragonfly. And there is a dragonfly pose in yoga. So, so far, we've done the cicada or locust pose. Last week, we did the butterfly pose, and now this week, it will be doing the dragonfly. Well, dragonflies are amazing insects. Their wings are a masterpiece of beauty and design, but their eyes are different from ours because they can see more color than we do. Now, when I read this, that just kind of really surprised me because I want to see all the colors that the dragonflies see. But humans have tricolor visions, and they can see colors through a combination of red, blue, and green. And our ability to see through these colors is attributed to three light sensitive protein in our eyes that are called opsins. While we only have three opsins, dragon's flies have at least 11 and some varieties of dragonflies have up to 30. And scientists believe that these insects can see polarized light and ultraviolet light so the colors that they see are different from those that we see. And I think that's just amazing. And then I'm going to go on to tell you that dragonflies only eat what they catch while they're in flight. And a dragonfly can eat up to 100 mosquitoes a day. And they're such efficient hunters that they catch up to 90 to 95% of their prey. They seldom miss. And most of their head is made up of their eye, which I just talked about. And they can see in every direction except directly behind themselves. So, there you go. There's Dragonfly 101. I found that very interesting. And even though I'm 61 years old, I learned some things about dragonflies that I did not know before. And also, if you want to find some dragonflies, the best place to find them is around a pond or a water area. And also, I remember a time uh, that they had a migration, and there were just hundreds of dragonflies flying past our back porch, and it was just so amazing to watch. So I believe that's later on in the summer when they do their migration. So, a fascinating thing that God's created. And our Bible verse today is from Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. 
Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on the earth. So we're going to set ourselves down and give ourselves our mind a chance to focus on a reading that I'm going to share with you. So if you'll put your hula hoop down, and remember, if you're not comfortable sitting in that easy seated position to slide a little pillow or cushion underneath your backside, that will help release uh, the tension that you feel in your hips. So join me, and I'll be with you in just a moment. This part is when we try and center our mind and to slow down all those busy thoughts that are in our head as we prepare for our yoga practice. So setting yourself as part of the thought of being in the center of your hula hoop. <clears throat> so before we start, I'd like to read you that Bible verse again from Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. <clears throat> Give yourself a moment to breathe in. And breathe out through your mouth, and as you exhale, let your eyes close softly and your chin come to your chest as you exhale. It only takes a few minutes to realize that your mind doesn't have an on and off switch. <clears throat> It's more like a large and energetic dog. Our minds give us the most fabulous experiences with their rambunctious frolicking, but they can also be quite destructive. To give your mind something to do, put it to work noticing beauty and joy in the world. Right now, ask it to put aside the depressing headlines from the day's news the hurtful comment that a colleague made at work, the list of items you need to buy at the grocery store. Ask it instead to think of 10 beautiful things it has encountered in the last 24 hours, and ask it to go on noticing beauty throughout the day to come. So let your mind think about 10 beautiful things. First on my list is going to be a bouquet of lavender from a friend. Your mind has wondered, bring it back. Don't let it run off. Bring it back to that 10 beautiful things. Breathing in and out. Coming back to stillness. Maybe you thought of your 10 things right away. Maybe you're struggling to come up with 10. But remembering that even in the darkest times, there's lots of beauty in this world. Taking just 
just another moment to let your mind collect the thoughts on the beauty around us in your memory. And let your eyes softly open and let them blink and let them open. Take another deep breath in and exhale. Chin comes to chest. So I hope you were able to accomplish those 10 beautiful things that we were thinking of. And now we'll move on to um, thinking about those dragonfly eyes and all the different colors they can see and in every direction they can go. So we're going to start with your eyes looking up toward the right corner of the ceiling that you're in. And looking up, stretching those eyes, and then bringing your glance down to the left side corner of the room, diagonally across. And then lifting your eyes up to the left far corner of the top of the ceiling or outside, wherever you are, looking up. And then bringing those eyes down to the right corner of the room or grasp where you are. And then back to center. And then opening and closing your eyes, letting them blink. And then closing. As you take a breath in and out, another breath in, and gently open your eyes. Okay, good. We're going to take our right ear to our right shoulder. Just give it a lean over and come to center and to the left. And come to center. Let's bring our chin to chest. And back to center. And let our head go back. And back to center. And then turn and look to the right. Back to center. To your left. center. Good. And now let's bring our shoulders up towards our ears and back and down. Bring the shoulders up and round and back and around. And three more times. Up and down. Up and down. And one more time. And now put your arms out in front of you. The hands um, Palms are facing each other. And let's take those hands up. Stretch from the shoulders up. And then take a lean to the right. And back to center. And to the left. And back to center. And bring those hands back down out in front of you, outstretched. We're going to open them up and take them back a little farther and bring them across in a hug. Notice which arm's on top. Going to open them up, take them back a little farther, and opposite hand on top as you give yourself a hug. And let yourself twist a little bit here from side to side. Good job. Good job. Okay, now we're going to uh, step out of our hoop here so you can put your hula hoop to the side and come to the mat. We're going to lie back on the mat. your 
side, <clears throat> knees are bent, and the soles of your feet are flat on the mat. And let your um, legs together fall over to the left. And as you do, turn your head and look over your right arm. Breathing deep in through this, and through your nose, and exhaling. Lift those legs, bring them back up again, and then let them fall to the right. Head turns to the left and looks out over the arm. Turn the knees to the mat. <clears throat> We're going to extend um, the left leg down and take your arms and pull that right knee, pull it gently into your chest and hold it there. We're going to need that leg stretched really good to do the dragonfly pose today. As you're holding your knee here, maybe just move it from side to side a little bit, getting it loosened up. You should feel a stretch in the back of your leg here, pull it into your chest. You can release it, and we're going to do the same with the other leg. So pull that other leg into your chest, and once again, Move from side to side a bit and feel the stretch in the back of your neck. And you can return um, to having your knees bent and the soles of the feet on the mat. We're going to take the right leg and place it across the top. And you want your right leg to be like a number seven going across here and giving that a nice stretch as well. Placing that leg back down and doing the same with the left leg, lifting that up, making sure you have it is pushed out to the side and that you're getting a stretch on that leg. Turning that leg down. This time we're going to put the right leg on top again. And if you're able, we're going to take our hands through the space that we have here and pull our leg into our chest for a stretch that way. So however you can get your, your hands behind your left knee and pull into your chest. Open up that leg. Turning that leg down and doing the same with the left leg. Bringing that up across your right knee. And when you feel ready, left hand goes through the space. Pull up and pull that leg in towards you.
instantly. Let your legs go out long and give yourself a nice full body stretch all the way up through. Stretch really good. We're going to sit up now and we're going to um, do some hip circles. So take your right uh, foot with your left hand and do some hip circles here in each direction. Now when that hip feels nice and loose, you can switch to the other side. our butterfly pose that we learned last week. So we're sitting together. First we'll uh, let the legs out in front of us and we'll pull the right leg in with the foot close to our thigh as we feel comfortable with. <clears throat> let that have a stretch here. Check in with your posture. Is your posture nice and tall? My yoga people here, yoga friends are having good posture. And then pull that left foot in to meet that right foot and hold them together here. And once again, check in with your posture because the posture is going to be a little different when both feet are up. And let your uh, legs come up and down here into the butterfly position. And then just um, take your thighs to the uh, on the downward beep here and let them have a good stretch while you're holding on. And once again, checking in with posture. <clears throat> we're going to move these hands down closer to where our toes are. And we're going to bend forward a little bit as much as you're comfortable doing. Some people may be able to bend all the way down. If you can just bend forward a little bit, whatever you can do. And let those legs go up and down. And you can release um, the holding the toes and come back up to the ankle area. A little more movement here. Okay, good job. And let those legs go out in front of you again. <clears throat> and arms go up. And bend forward for staff pose. Maybe you come to your toes, maybe you come close to the toes. Whatever you can do. And let yourself come back up again. Maybe you went a little farther this time. Come back up. Deep breath in. Exhale, bend forward. And maybe even farther this time. Let yourself come up. We're going to put our hands to heart center, check in with our posture again, and we're going to take our hands around and put your hands, if you can, in the prayer position behind your back. So you have a little bit of a stretch out there. If you can, if you can, you can. It's okay, you can do what you can do. <clears throat> Just let that stretch a little bit. 
And then when you feel like you've had enough of this, we're going to move to tabletop. We're going to do a few cat cows and open up. And then Brad will show us the dragonfly position. And then Morgan will come up and do a dragonfly position with him. And we'll move on from there. So I'll meet you on the mat in tabletop position. So your fingers are spread wide like starfish. Wrists are over shoulders. Uh, really, I should have said shoulders over wrists here. You should be able to look back and not see your toes. We're going to inhale, let our belly drop, the gaze looks up. Do a nice stretch here for your spine. Let it, let it sag down in there. As you exhale, pull the belly button into the spine and curl it up. Next inhale, belly drops. Exhale, pull that navel into your spine. And belly drops. I'll wag your dog here just a little bit. Wag your dog. We're going to do a little bit of spinal balance. So we're going to send that right arm out like we're going to shake someone's hand. And we're going to take that left foot back, toes are pointed down. Engage your core here, nice and steady. And bring it back in. And we're going to send that left hand out. Right foot goes back, toe is pointed down. Engage your core. And you can bring it back. Let your toes come together and let's do a child's pose. And while we're in child's pose, Fred will make his way forward and do our dragon fly pose. So let yourself settle in to the child's pose. start out and going to peel our backs. And Dixie does a good job of warming us up by pulling our knees into our chest because that is a big part of this pose. We'll start out with the our backs. Hold those knees in towards your chest. Now one of the premises of this pose is that you'll be able to touch your nose or your forehead to your knee. I tried this before the start of the practice. Believe me, I can't do it. So don't force yourself to try to do that unless you're comfortable with it. Try to do as much as you can. Okay. From here, we're going to roll back. Bring those knees close to our head. Have our left foot extend up. Right foot on our knee. Use your hands to support your back. And again, try to get your knee in the general direction of your forehead. Doesn't have to be on your forehead. I'll just hold it here for a few seconds. And when you're ready, extend those feet up, release your hands, pull them back down. We'll flip around to the other side here, and we'll do it on the reverse side. So again, you'll be in the recline or dead man position. Bring those knees up to your chest, up them in. When you're ready, roll up onto your back, bring that left knee down towards your forehead, left foot on or about your right knee, use those hands to support your lower back,
Morgan, you want to give it a try? Okay. You lay down? Okay. Support your lower back with your hands. There you go. That is one of those um, positions. When I was younger, like Morgan, I would do that all the time, lay back in the plow position and let my <laughs> arms, legs go back over. But for some reason, that doesn't go as easy for me as it used to. So I'm going to work on that at home. And hopefully in time, I'll be able to do the dragonfly the way it's supposed to. But thank you, Fred and Morgan. Well done. Good job. So here we are. And we're going to come. So you're down and I'm up. So I tell you what, how about we meet together in down dog? Let's come to down dog. Give you a second to get where you need to be. And pedal it out here in down dog. Letting that left foot come across with a stretch. Over. 